जय श्री राधे सब वैष्णवों को जय श्री कृष्ण श्री वल्लभाधीश की जय कंटिन्यूइंग विथ वार्ता 160 ऑन डे 177 ऑफ आवर रीडिंग्स दैट वैष्णव हैज टेकन माय टेस्ट नाउ आई विल टेस्ट हिम Many days passed. The Tadrashi Vaishnava's wife passed away. The Tadrashi Vaishnava considered it is difficult for a single person to properly serve the Lord. Therefore, I shall remarry in order to serve the Lord better. There was an unmarried girl in his village. The priest was called and a date was decided. The Tadrashi sent out invitations to all the Vaishnavas. When the Bhagavadiya Vaishnava received his invitation, he thought to himself, "Now I shall get a chance to test him. I shall arrive there at the moment when he is to mount the groom's horse." Thinking in this way, the Bhagavadiya took five or seven Vaishnavas with him and set off. Just as the Tadrashi Vaishnava was mounting the groom's horse, he was told that the Bhagavadiya had arrived. immediately got off the horse came to meet the face of a face to face and respectfully welcomed him into his home he facilitated the guest vaishna was bath mahaprasad and rest and then only got on with his wedding the officiating brahmin priest told him that the auspicious moment has passed he told him to find another he did it was for an hour later he got married and then came home it was one and a half hours into the night already the tatra shri vaishnava cooked and made offerings to shri tagaji he prepared suitable offerings for the lord's morning seva then woke up his His Shri Krishna dressed and adorned him and then made lunchtime offerings. He arranged for the, all the Vaishnavas to bathe and then let them all have the holy sight of his Shri Tagaji and then, after the Lord had been settled down to rest, fed them all with Mahaprasad. The Bhagavad Gita Vaishnava thought, This Vaishnava is truly a Tadrashi in every way, so I have tested him in the worldly realm. Let me now test him on the spiritual level. The Tadrashi Vaishnava woke the Lord from his nap and completed all of his seva up to the Lord taking rest for the night. They sat down to enjoy a divine discourse. The Bhagavad Gita Vaishnava started their discussions and continued continued them until morning had broken they went on for about another 2 hours in the morning until the bhagavadiya vaishnava considered he is truly a tadrashi vaishnava however it is getting late for the lord seva to commence as it is already time for the rajbhog aarti i should stand up now and take my bath the tadrashi then also arose and bathed and completed all the seva of rishi takoshi up to his nap After the Raj Bhog Aarti, he then invited all the Vaishnavas to bathe and to partake of Mahaprasad. The Bhagavadiya prepared to set off home, but the Tadrashi Vaishnava invited him to remain in his home for another few days. He declined, saying that he had better set off. They took their leave of each other, and the Bhagavadiya came home happily. These two Vaishnavas had so much love for Sri Gosaiji, Sri Tagaji, and Vaishnavas. Bhav Prakash. A doubt arises in this story. After all, it is a great offence to test other Vaishnavas, especially Bhagwadiyas and Tadrashis. Sri Acharyaji gave this instruction to Kumbandasji as well as other Vaishnavas. So then, why did this Bhagwadiya and this Tadrashi test test each other? What was the reason for their so doing? Here the answer is given. The Bhagwadiya and the Tadrashi Vaishnavas tested each other in this case in order to reveal the true righteous duty of Vaishnavas. This story shows their true duties. It helps those who hear and read it to avoid the distraction of false ego. It also teaches that if an ordinary Vaishnava tries to test Bhagwadiyas and Tadrashi Vaishnavas, it is a hindrance to their devotion. In this case, the two were certainly not ordinary, and this story serves as a guide to other divine souls for the sake of their instruction in divine loving seva. Thus concludes Vartha 160 the story of the Bhagavadiya and the Tadrashi Vaishnava from Gujarat who were the recipients of Sri Gosaiji's great grace and accomplished Vaishnavas there is no true end to their tale Vartha 161 the story of one Vaishnava who climbed upon Sri Giriraji on seeing whom Sri Gosaiji shook his head Bhav Prakash This is the devotee of Tamasi disposition in eternal lila the name is Mukta she manifests from Madhura and is thus the personification of her divine loving sentiment He was born into a merchant family in Gujarat He was only 10 when his parents died not long afterwards a renunciate came to his town the boy met and kept company with him the renunciate decided to leave the town and travel to Varanasi and the boy went with him when they arrived in Varanasi the boy stayed with the renunciate when he reached the age of 27 he thought to himself i have never been to mathura or bindavan it would be nice to tour the vrajaland he left varanasi and came to mathura he bathed on vishramghat 
After that, he moved on to Gokul and to Takarani Ghat. At that time, Sri Gosaiji was performing his evening prayers on the Ghat. He caught sight of him and immediately decided that he should become his disciple. He humbly requested Sri Gosaiji to accept him as a disciple. Sri Gosaiji told him to take a bath in the Sri Yamnaji River. Sri Gosaiji then initiated him with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandh. The Vaishnava stayed for some time in Gokul and was blessed with Sri Gosaiji's sight every day. Some time in later, he took his leave of Sri Gosaiji and travelled to Sri Govardhan. There he had the holy sight of Sri Govardhan Naji. He was struck by the great beauty of the Govardhan Hill and decided to stay there. He never went anywhere else. Sri Gosaiji once came to Sri Nathadwara, bringing many Vaishnavas with him. When he looked up at Sri Govardhan, he saw this Vaishnava climbing up the hill. He saw that there was some cow dung on the path and that to avoid it, the Vaishnava stepped off the path and put his foot directly onto Sri Govardhan and climbed up that way. When Sri Gosaiji saw this, he shook his head. When the Vaishnavas who were with him saw this, they asked, O Maharaj, why did you shake your head? Please tell us. Sri Gosaiji explained, Sri Govardhan is the Lord's own form and is embedded with divine jewels. Only an ignorant fool would clamber and run all over Sri Govardhan in this manner. There is a story in the Brahma Vaivarta Purana. Please listen to it. Sri Gosaiji continued, Once Sri Krishna Chandra and the sage Narad were sitting together. Sri Krishna told Naraji, I am thirsty and need water. Naraji went to fetch him some water. As he went along, he saw a large lake. Two boys were sitting by the lake performing austerities. Next to them was a huge pile of bones. Shri, seeing this, Naraji went back to the Lord's side. Sri Taguji asked him, Did you not bring any water? Naraji told him what he had seen. Sri Taguji smiled. Naraji said, Oh, my dear Lord, what is the reason for this pile of bones? Please tell me. Sri Taguji spoke out. Those two boys are great yogi masters. They are performing austerities with the purpose of getting to have the holy sight of Sri Govardhan. They have been doing this for many lifetimes, and the pile of bones is all of the bones in their previous of their previous lifetimes. They will only attain the holy sight of Sri Govardhan when the Lord so graces. It will still take them a very long time. Sri Govardhan is the Lord's own form and embodies all of his divine pastimes. He consists of pure bliss. The fact of the matter is that Sri Govardhan grants his holy sight through the grace-filled intervention of Sri Vallabhacharyaji. This embodied soul is ignorant of this and so I shook my head. Sri Govardhan Hill is the foremost servant of Sri Hari. In this way Sri Gosaiji uses their question to reveal all these principles. Prakash. The moral of this story is that the Sri Govardhan mountain is most divine. He is the embodiment of all the Lord's divine pastimes. Thus he consists of pure bliss and is the Lord's own form. Therefore Vaishnava should never place their feet on him. If one must go up to the, for the sake of Seva or with the purpose of having the Lord's holy sight, then they must first bow down to him and ask leave to go up and then keep their feet strictly on the designated pathways. They must never put their foot anywhere else at all, otherwise they are violating the Lord's play and will be excluded from part participation therein. Thus concludes Varta 161, the story of the Vaishnava who climbed on Sri Govardhan, who was the recipient of Sri Gosaiji's great grace and an accomplished Vaishnava. There is no end to his tale. Thus concludes the reading for today. We continue tomorrow with Varta 162, Ajkan and Kijay, Sa Vaishnava Kujay Shri Krishna, Jai Shri Radhi.